It is National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month and suicide rates are climbing among young people and people of color. Minorities are less likely to receive mental health care than others. Reports show among people with mental illness, 48% of white people received mental health services as compared to 31% of black people and 22% of Asian people. Dr. Don Witherspoon, an assistant professor with the Department of Psychology at UNF, joins me live on the morning show. So good morning, Dr. Witherspoon. Thank you so much for being here with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And I know there is a cultural stigma around mental health. Uh, what are some barriers that you think keep minorities from getting help? So there are a few. Um, some of them are just uh, kind of a history of distrust of the medical system in general, um, history of problems with the medical system in general. Then there's a little bit of a denial that mental health problems even exist. And so that's something that we have to address. And then there is this big stigma, particularly in the African-American community, but not just with African-Americans. There is a stigma about seeking help for mental health issues and about admitting even if you are suffering from a mental health issue. And now we have other things. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Continue. Other things um, that are also barriers to care are things such as lack of insurance or underinsurance because people need insurance in order to pay for their treatments. And then also, are they getting the appropriate care? So getting uh, appropriate mental health care from culturally competent providers, providers who are aware of the um, culture the patient is coming from and what they need in order to be successful in treatment. And I know you just listed a whole bunch of different factors um, because I know only one in three African-Americans who need mental health, um, they're not getting that right now. So I know you were talking about insurance and other different factors. How important is it for people to feel comfortable enough to even want to accept that help? That's a that's a big factor. So if someone is suffering from a mental health issue and they're denying that they have it or not comfortable speaking with their providers, then we don't even have the insurance issue if we can't get through that part right there. So reducing stigma is, is really important. Um, accepting that mental health problems exist being open and talking with your family about what's going on with you, but also what's in your family history. Just like you want to know if you have a family history of diabetes or heart disease, you also want to know if you have a family history of mental health issues. And so kind of starting that conversation, opening up with your family um, will hopefully help reduce some of the stigma. Now, at the same time, um, we do have to make sure there are appropriate treatments and providers available for um, all minorities. So one thing that's being done recently is more of a push to train providers to deliver culturally competent care. So providers are educated in the best ways to work with all the patients they may treat. And so the patients feel more comfortable opening up and they can have a better successful relationship. And what are some things we can do in everyday life to also uh, reduce some of those stigmas? So one of the things we could do is be open about what we're going through ourselves and also open about um, <clears throat> just mental health in general. So when you're trying to reduce or eliminate any stigma, one of the things you just want to do is just talk about it, shine light on it, bring light on it, like you guys are doing right now with this segment. But we can also, with our families, with our friends, you can use words like mental health. You can talk about depression and anxiety. You can talk about what you've been feeling. Um, we actually have this nice push now where a lot of celebrities, minority celebrities, are coming forward and admitting to their own mental health issues and making it public. And that's another way to hopefully help reduce the stigma among the community. When you hear, you know, Michelle Obama can be um, open about what she's going through, Taraji P. Henson, even Dwayne The Rock Johnson was talking about his, his issues, that will help. But also we ourselves talking with each other, talking with our family members. At the same time, it is important when you're talking to a family member or a friend who maybe is going through some kind of mental health issue, that you're not judgmental. In the past, people have made the mistake of in trying to be supportive of their family or friends, they'll say something like, well, you're strong, you don't need a therapist, or you don't need you don't need to talk to somebody. You don't need any medication. And you're trying to be supportive, but that right there kind of shuts down the conversation. It shuts down their ability to say to you, I'm really struggling. I need help. I'm not able to do it on my own. So let's not actually kind of hurt ourselves and hurt our community and our friends and family by shutting them down in order to support them. Don't be judgmental. Be open, listening, supportive, and be okay with saying words like mental health, depression, anxiety, 
Do you need more help? Have you talked to your doctor about it? You can have those conversations. And really quickly, uh, before we wrap, let's say there is someone who is open and ready to receive that help. Is there any particular place that you recommend them to start or resource use to, to find uh, that person who can help them? The first place I would always say is talk to your primary care doctor if you have one. If you have a doctor who you talk to about your diabetes, about your, you know, your foot pain, whatever, when that person asks you how you're doing, be honest. I'm struggling. I'm, you know, I can't sleep be honest about those mental health symptoms because they usually ask and people usually kind of downplay it. Start there. They'll have a few referrals for you. There's also lots of places online. Um, NAMI, the National Alliance of Mental Illness, is a great website to find resources. If you, if you don't have anything else, you can kind of start there. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Witherspoon. It was a pleasure having you on this morning.